Well, hey everyone out there, you're watching Wired Up Retro, episode 44, and today's episode has all to do with my attempt to make an arcade stick. And this will be USB compatible. Um, it's not just a stick, it's actually got some additional features, which I think you're going to like. Uh, this is not only going to have a uh, flight stick mounted, that's basically the Tron arcade stick, but it's also going to have a glowing trackball as well as uh, a spinner. And this will enable you to play anything from the game Tron uh, in the way you played it in the arcade back in the 80s to uh, Battlezone or other games that might uh, prove to be pretty interesting. So I'm going to show you uh, some of the products that I've acquired here to uh, get this thing started. This project is going to require uh, this spinner. Um, these are all products that you can get through Glenn Planamento, who has his own YouTube channel. And if you want to check uh, out where to purchase these, I'm going to provide links below. So make sure you go down to the description and uh, take a look at the reasonable cost that all this adds up to. It's actually not that bad. And so you can check it out. All right, so the spinner is made by uh, Glenn Planamento's group, as well as the adjustable LED trackball. And I also have the Tron arcade stick, which glows with a very nice blue light. So let's take a look at these products. Now, each one of these components is uh, compatible with the Arcade 1UP uh, unit for playing various different games. Let's go ahead and tear into the trackball first. We'll take a look here with the trackball. You've got a schematic with a little 12-in-1 board that comes with it, and that's going to help you get it all wired up. It's got the proper connectors. All right. And this is the trackball. Nice. It definitely has a nice feel to it. I like it. And it comes on the bottom or some screws. I already opened this once, so I took out the instruction manual. I'll show that to you right now. Trackball manual. Shows you how to mount it from the underside. Connectors and the RGB adjustment table for the different colors, red, blue, green, magenta, wow, cyan, yellow, white, looking real nice. Got to support email, thunderjoystick.com, looking good. All right, let's now get to the um, spinner. There's our instruction manual for the spinner. And inside, talks a little bit about how to mount it from the, uh, from the underside of the arcade case, you would bring two components together, one on the top, one on the bottom. Yeah. And this is the bottom of the spinner, and then we have the top. The, yeah, that's very nice. Boy, it's, it's got some weight to it. I think it's aluminum, or if not, it's steel, but uh, yeah, it's definitely nice. I need to, uh, I think you need to use a little tiny Allen wrench to uh, get in there and loosen it so it'll go all the way down. And now it's tightened down too much, so you can't quite get it there perfectly, but get the idea. Once it's in there, it's gonna work great. And then we have, uh, again, some wires to connect it all together. It's all contained with very good protection. Uh, styrofoam looks, looks like it was uh, designed to really do a good job of protecting it on its long journey to my home. All right, so onwards, we're gonna take a look at the uh, Tron stick. Let's see what that's looking like next. Okay, again, nice job with the packaging. Glenn, you're doing a great, great service for many, many arcade one-up fans and also people like me who are gonna just create their own joystick uh, arcade stick. All right, manual looks good. Glenn's Retro Show. Good job, Glenn. All right, so this is the base of the stick. Oh, real nice and clicky. Very nice. And then the stick's gonna, you know, gonna put these wires straight on through that hole. It'll come down the underside, and then this is gonna get mounted right in there. And I think you're gonna click it into position. Once it's there, it's in the right spot. All right, and you've got a uh, little, little sticker here. For, which says Tron on it. This will all glow with a wonderful blue color at the end. Can't wait to see that. 
And then inside here we have a lot of wires and it's all packaged very well. Here's a little Allen wrench. Looks like a little battery and a couple of screws in here. And we have the uh, mounts for four-way and eight-way. Uh, depending on what games you're gonna play, you're gonna wanna add that in there. It's very nice. It all looks like the quality of the parts are, are just top-notch. I mean, we're talking like the best. And certainly, uh, I'm really excited about seeing this all put together. Now when it comes to making a case for your arcade stick, there's many different ways you can go about it. Initially, I was thinking of actually cutting the shape out of the top of the board and then creating the box case below where the components would be mounted. And one day at a thrift store, I found a $4 monitor stand and I looked at it and I thought, wow, that would really cut down on the amount of time on this project. So for $4, I brought this home and it's basically really nice. It's a com uh, computer monitor stand, it had drawers in it initially and I just removed the drawers and we'll come up with a way to get a covering up in the front and in the back and also a, a floorboard for the bottom but anyways when I first bought this it had a very small hole this is an old school monitor stand where they had the hole and you could run wires straight down through it um, apparently so um, if you do find one of these monitor stands and it doesn't have the hole already in it by my by the way the hole was about maybe an inch initially and you could use one of these cutters cylinder cutters with a dr regular drill to get an initial hole started. You know, you can buy them in varying sizes. This one is the only one I own. It's pretty small, maybe an inch. So this is probably more of a two inch size hole. So anyway, what I did was I, I started using a metal file and I filed it for, I don't know, quite a while until I finally got the right size hole in the right position. And um, yeah, you could just buy a larger <laughs> cylinder cutter to do that. Anyways, once you've got that accomplished, uh, then you're ready to put, you're ready to mount that uh, trackball. So let's take a look at how this is going to mount from beneath. All right, so there's our case top, and you can see this is the back side, the front side. I bought, I bought this because I kind of like that bevel right there. I think that's actually pretty nice. So anyway, let's flip it over, and the underside is where we're going to concern ourselves with mounting the trackball when it comes time to do this. So you gotta slide it into that hole. And once it's in there, you can see we've got an issue. And that is it's sort of uh, sunk in there. Unfortunately, that's not ideal. So we're gonna have to remove some material and we're gonna remove it in basically the shape of that square area. So that square area right there, I'm gonna have to take a router, a wood router to this and remove material going in there until I don't know, we're probably gonna remove a quarter inch of um, wood. So I've, I've never done that before. I don't even own a router, but I have a buddy who's uh, told me he's gonna lend a hand. And if you take a look at the Arcade 1UP unit um, picture here, you can see that in that unit, there is an inset for the trackball. And uh, you know they, they have the rest at, I don't know, probably about a half inch, three quarter inch. Um, width of the actual plate, but it's probably bored into here by that router by at least, um, I would say, quarter inch, maybe a little more than that. So we'll, uh, we'll try to bore into it and then the trackball will sit up uh, all the way out of this hole so you can access it freely. All right, so that's the plan. I'm gonna be sending this off to my buddy. We'll see how it comes out. And hopefully you'll have it back in a couple days. All right, so now you can see the results of using the router on the underside of the arcade casing top. Let's flip it over. Take out the trackball, and you can see that about a quarter inch of wood was removed from this half inch thick board. Um, the, the hole measures at about two and a quarter inch diameter. And the, the method I used for marking off this square area before doing the routing was using masking tape to delineate the borders of the trackball unit. And the dimensions for this square zone right here is three and nine sixteenth inch by three and nine sixteenth inch. And the fit is just, just perfect. Now, if you don't wanna use a router, I've considered a method that can be seen here. 
but then I realized that it may not be looking very good when it's all said and done. So I came up with something better. What you would want to do would be to buy a wood basket. And this one I purchased from Hobby Lobby. And it was originally 15, it was half off. So about $7.50 plus tax. Pretty good deal. It's got a, a base that's 3 8 inch thick. And if you flip it over, you're gonna see that this top is completely flat. That's the kind you wanna have. You don't want a little lip or an edge on any of these edges um, up the, what will be the top of your arcade stick. So anyways, um, you know, it's definitely not as thick here on the base as that half inch thick board of the computer monitor stand. You know, only 3 8 thin three-eighth of an inch thick. And that's still gonna be fine. So um, what you also need is to buy a board that's about a quarter inch thick, and I managed to get this board at a wood supply store for a dollar. It's two foot four inches long and one and a half feet wide. So you're gonna cut that into four rectangular pieces of wood, okay? So you might have one piece that goes in on uh, this side and one piece that goes here. These by the way aren't cut to exact specifications I just wanted to do this for illustration purposes and you can see you you know when you put another piece of wood here You're gonna have what is the equivalent of a beveled uh, or you could say a uh, a Routed out zone for your trackball and then you cut a hole right there the right proper size You're good to go and by the way that square would be again I'm reminding you three and nine sixteenth inch by three and nine sixteenth inch and you're going to need to glue these pieces um, to the uh, base of your basket. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, also, you'd want to get a board that's cut so that you could slide it in here and get it fit uh, just right. And there might be unique ways you could get it fastened in there. Uh, maybe you would glue it or then again, you probably don't want to glue it, but maybe using uh, removable Velcro fasteners might work or some way to uh, magnetically attach it in there. So you got a, a uh, plate over the, the uh, bottom of your arcade stick. And then once you've got it, you're all set to go with your arcade stick with the basket. So anyway, it's kind of a neat, neat idea. I'm not going to use that idea. Let's get back to my project with the monitor stand. Uh, so anyway, we got the two and a quarter inch hole for the trackball right in the center of the case. And next you want to decide whether, whether to place the Tron joystick up here on the left side or on the right. Now in the arcade, uh, you had it on the right and then you had the spinner up here on the left. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to place those. And you probably want to use masking tape, maybe eyeball it at first and put your masking tape um, delineating spots right where you want your joystick and your spinner. And of course, you're going to want to you know, measure from here to here and here to here and make sure it's all symmetrical and make sure you don't go too far to the side because this is going to block uh, access to that part of the, uh, the uh, board. So anyways, so then you can mark the spots where you're going to also want to put the buttons and you want them placed in a way that could be very symmetrical. Um, the nice thing about masking tape, by the way, is they can be easily removed, so you have an easy way of adjusting the placement of where you want these holes. By the way, the holes that you're going to be using to um, cut for the joystick and the spinner, those are uh, you're going to use a hole saw of one and a half inch, uh, or maybe just shy of one and a half inch. Mine was just a little shy of one and a half. All right, so there'll be a total of 11 buttons placed on the board. Let's talk about the buttons a little bit. Four of them will be to the left of the trackball, and then there'll be four to the right of it. And again, you're going to want to place them symmetrically. Again, use a little masking tape to map it out beforehand, and then measure to make sure you got symmetry. And then don't go too far to the side because, again, you, you don't want to get blocked by this. All right, so each of these holes will be drilled with a one and one eighth inch hole saw. And you're going to also do three buttons at the top. So again, one and one eighth inch hole saw required. These, by the way, are 30 millimeter Suzo hap type buttons that mount in 28 millimeter holes. And I have the Amazon link in the description that will point you to these very buttons. Well, all right, we've got all the masking tape applied where we want the buttons. 
and the two uh, controllers, stick, spinner, obviously trackball here. And uh, I put a little plus signs in each um, area here. I measured from sides and from below and from above and made sure that it was pretty um, symmetrical. So we got a one and a half inch hole saw, which I will apply to both of the controllers, but none of the button. The buttons are gonna get a smaller size hole saw. All right, so go right to the center of the cross, aim downwards, here we go. Look at that. All right, on to the next one. So we're going from one and a half inch uh, hole saw to a one and one eighth inch or 29 millimeter hole saw. This one's brand new. The other one was used so it might be that this will go a little quicker hopefully. This is for the buttons. So here's the board that I had cut to use as the base of the case. So in this particular case, I'm going to just slide it in there. Okay. And you can see if you can see if it was pushed up on, it would possibly mess with components that are going to be in here. So we need to have it so that it's staying down. And so what I did was I had cut those four pieces of wood and we're gonna actually just put those in here. Let me pull this out and put them right here and then glue them in place.
All right, so we got the wood bonding, and you can see it's pretty much a flush surface on the very front, this side here. And that's the way it ought to be. Everything else doesn't matter. This can be jagged edged. As long as this doesn't go too far back, we're in good shape because we don't want this part rump bumping into the uh, track ball within the uh, casing. So anyway, yeah, these are probably two inches, I figure, two inches long and maybe an inch and a half to inch and three quarters wide. Looking good so far. We'll wait till it dries. All right, so okay, I've got the glue job completed. This is a nice flat surface. Fortunately, it worked out nice when you slide it in. That actually is right up there, which is what we wanted. And the problem is, and this is something I just determined, you know, this Tron stick has its base. The base is supposed to fit inside here, and unfortunately, it just sits too tight. So we got ourselves an issue here. I think what I'm gonna have to do is we're gonna have to add something to each side to make it a little bit uh, higher up. Um, so I've got an idea, and that is I've got this wood that I bought from Hobby Lobby. It's made by the company Woodpile Fun. There's actually two little slabs in here. So I will be um, cutting it about here and putting it here. Now actually, let me show you something about this. This part can be popped off there, like that, okay? And you can see here, we got a screw here and a screw there. I'm gonna undo those screws. We'll pull this one off, and then we'll take that piece of wood and put it there. We'll do it also on this side. And then put this back on. We'll drill down through the wood, a little hole on each side, get the screws back in. This will be heightened a little bit on each side, and that will give us enough room to get this fit in, hopefully. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I took a uh, ink pen and put some ink on each of these holes after I removed this, laid this down, flattened it, and then it showed up with the ink. So I'm now going to drill those holes. Once they're drilled, I'll lay it there, and then on top of that, I will place this, and these have screw holes, and then to that, I will use slightly longer screws I believe I have the right size here. These are Pro Crafter six by three quarter inch screws. What came out of here was definitely not three quarters inch. I would say that's probably more like three eighths of an inch. Um, it's not, I don't think, it might be, eh, it could be a little bit more than a half. Maybe it's a half inch. Anyway, it should be a little better at three and a quarter inch. Once I drill down into that, hopefully this will look good. I'll put this on top and get them all set up and it'll look basically it'll look like this and i'm going to paint this black because it's otherwise would stand out so i'm going to go ahead and do all that we'll see how it looks okay i want to show you how this worked out i have the piece of wood right in here it seems to hold pretty well quite well and on this side right there you can barely tell it's there you can tell on the front that this is now jacked up a little bit higher. Same with this side. All right, so when you try to put the, uh, the floorboard in, now these don't exactly, don't exactly fit flush up against the surface. So I found another piece of wood in my garage tool cabinet that seems to fit. I had to sand it just a little bit, but I think that's gonna work. Press it in there, okay. And I also checked this, the base of my Tron joystick, and it does, it does fit. So it looks like we've solved that issue. Now we're gonna need to shore up the back, and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to take these pieces of wood and put them right there. And, and that will not be attached to the baseboard like on the other side, but it's from this will be attached to the top side. And I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. All right, so we have our two pieces of wood placed against the underside of the top. I have bought corner braces and corner braces can be placed here and here. 
with screws uh, embedded. So we'll see how this uh, task goes. I will take care of that using a drill to get a drill hole started. Okay, so here's what we're coming up with. And these are um, corner, corner braces and it's one inch by a half inch. And it says zinc plated. So I've got them uh, in there with some flat screws that are definitely short. They don't go through the thickness of this, fortunately. And then I took some other screws and shored up the wood on each side. I didn't go all the way through or all the way down flush because these screws are actually longer than, again, the width of this. So just be cautious about that. You also want to make sure that if your arcade buttons are going to go in there, you want to make sure that you can screw this down on each and every one of these. I checked this um, before I planted all this in there so that I could make sure it wasn't going to be a problem. This one's awful close to the bracket, but it, uh, it, it does work. Okay, and then you can make sure it turns the right way. There you go. All right, so there I've installed my first button. It's the Hap Suzo Hap uh, button. All right, let's start installing things. By the way, I do want to show you how this works. Uh, let me give you a quick idea of what it's all about here. Yeah, there you go. So on the front, you're short up. And on the back, it's all very solid. All right, it does slide. And we're going to mount this thin balsa wood purchased, uh, let's see, this was at Hobby Lobby. One and one eighth by six inches by 24 inches. It's a nice long piece of wood here. All right, so that'll be cut with scissors, really. It's, it's thin enough. And so anyway, the balsa wood will be placed here and so I can get a good measure on it. And I'm going to basically make a cut with scissors and we'll do the same on the other side. And it'll be glued here and to the other wood on the other side. Right in the center is where it gets glued. But before I do anything with gluing that, I definitely want to get it spray painted first. All right, so this is the back. I've got these uh, two wood pieces glued to the piece of balsa wood that's been painted, and it's all secured in a really good way. This is not going anywhere. Okay. Now on the front, I've got, again, more balsa wood glued there. I'm gonna slide this into place. And when it slid into place, the front should be looking good. Gonna have to push that in a little bit. I did a little extra thing here, adding a slight small piece of wood in behind, but you don't have to do that if you don't want. Anyway, it's all set. We've got the bottom is removable anytime you want to remove it, but it's in there pretty well. It's held 
tightly. I think it's going to be a nice case. All right, so I'm gonna put in some of the components right now. Uh, all we've got installed right now are button, that, that single button right there. Over here, we got the joystick. I used some masking tape to place it, and I did look on the other side, making sure it's exactly where it's supposed to be, and it is. I think it's in the exact right position, so we're gonna take some screws, put in here, here, and over here, and over here as well. Then we got the trackball, and I'm gonna already place that right here. When you drive that in, it's very well held. I could definitely add some glue here if I choose to. I could also um, screw it in, screw it down. Although the, um, the interior uh, routing kind of prevents screws from going here and here. I've got a place right here that a screw would go in and succeed, but here and here, I don't think it would. So anyway. I mean, for now, I think maybe an adhesive uh, like glue or even blue tack would work. Uh, as long as I used enough blue tack, it'd probably hold pretty well. But anyway, um, it holds tight the way it is. Um, yeah, we'll see. Put it back in there. And then we have the, um, the spinner uh, bottom part here. that will go right there and I'll use probably just four screws. One, two, three, four. All right, we'll show you what the end product looks like here in a moment. All right, so we got the spinner attached, the joystick attached, and I managed to attach the trackball with screws, um, some of which were not tightening as well as they should be, but some were like, I think this one tightened up fantastically, and there was another one that tightened up really well. So I think it's pretty well held. I didn't need to glue it. All right, I did align this perfectly. I managed to get the spinner on board with four screws. It's held really well in there. So now it's time to hit the buttons task. So let's get working. Before I, before I show you how to install a button, which is a pretty simple process, I do want to mention here that these uh, screws right here were eight by five eighths inch. And that's a little longer than the screws I was using down here for the spinner which were six by one half inch. I also use the six and one half inch for the trackball to screw that in. So just be aware, um, you know, you definitely don't want to go too long. That five eighths inch for this spinner would have been too long and come through the surface on the other side, which would not have been good. Um, but yeah, the half inch was fine. Five eighths inch for this, since it stands up a little taller is fine. All right, so yeah, let's get to the buttons. So on the Suzo hat buttons, you want to align it you have to align it this one particular way. Let me see if I figure out how to do it. Okay, so you put that in there and then swivel it. And then this side will go here. If I can pull it, there we go. Okay, so that's, now when you press this button, there's a little tiny uh, button that's being pressed in this device to activate it. All right, so um, there you go, that's how you do it. So I took this out because when you go to put it through here, this being attached may not uh, fit through the hole. So you're gonna have to do the attachment while it's in here, which is a little trickier. I'll, I'll work on that and I'll get it attached. Now the thing is, you can see these four prongs to the joystick, hopefully you can see them, and they're very, very close to this um, button. And so I'm gonna have to actually attach those um, four, five prongs to whatever it attaches to before putting this on and see if it all fits in there. It's a pretty tight little gap. So the joystick came with this um, harness and I'm gonna go ahead and open it up while you're on camera here. USB cable, looks like a, a mini connector to a standard USB. And then you've got all sorts of button connectors and joystick connector. And some sort of encoder board right there. Okay. So we need to find the connection that goes to the joystick. It's probably gonna be one of the bigger, yeah, it's this bigger one right here. 
So I'll try to figure out how to put that on board. Yeah, there we go. All right, so now that that's connected, this has to go, this button's gonna have to go in there. So the best way to do this is to um, put it through and get this little ring attached and start getting it attached. It's a screw on ring. Okay, got it going. And screw that on. Okay, and I could tighten that down. <clears throat> yeah, I might have to use some needle nose pliers or just a pair of regular pliers to get that tightened down just right. You want it so that the, the tall little pivot point is there at the back of the unit. All right, and that is going to go like this. Okay, now the trick is to get this little hole aligned with that prong. To do that, I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver. Into position, there we go, I got it, it's in. So we've got this hooked up, I think, just fine. It looks like it's going to work. And these are not crimped too bad, it's, it's fine. All right, so our next step is to add some more buttons. All right, let's go ahead and put the emblem on there, or the decal. Sticks right on there, I just centered it up and then plant it. Beautiful. Drawn. All right, so this is the underside. You can see I've installed all the buttons. I got the circular rings around each one of these. I've even on this button installed the little connector device along with these and you notice I'm pointing those three inwards this way this one's pointing this way and you want all the wires kind of going in toward the center so that's why that's pointing this way all these will have their connectors pointing this way all right so one thing I've learned in this project is that the encoder that came with this it's a USB encoder and every one of these wires has a little plastic connector. Um, so that plastic connector has one particular issue. That is when I tried to take the uh, plastic connector and connect it to this, it doesn't fit. Okay. I can't get it to, I can't jam it on there. So what I've realized is that I'm going to have to show you how to take the plastic off. And once it's off, you're going to be left with one of these little metal pieces, and unfortunately these don't fit either. They're too small, so you're gonna have to use a tool to, to sort of spread apart that from left to right a little bit. So I'll show you how that's done in a moment. But let me show you how to remove the plastic for right now. So I got my wife giving, lending a hand here. So you wanna take the wire where it enters into the back of the plastic and take, jam a little screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, a mini, as small as you can go, but well, maybe not the smallest, but next size up. Once you've got that in there, you're gonna press on a little tab. Okay. All right, out. So now we gotta bend that to be a little more open. Okay, there we go. So we'll do that to each and every one of the wires. Now, here's a guide to the encoder, and each of those wires, like this one, goes to the square button on a PS2 controller or three, and that goes to X or cross, O, triangle, and then L1, L R1, L2, R2, 
You've even got a mode button, which I might explain a little later, or maybe in the description. We've got the select, the start, the home button, and I'm not gonna do anything with turbo. You've got up, down, left, right, and ground would be right here, the final one. So this is where the USB gets plugged in and pay attention to these two lines, the actual encoder itself, which I've got here surrounded by many wires. Let me bring this down so you can see it. it, is really the representation of what you were just looking at. And each wire is different colors, so you'd have to map out which colors go for this column and which colors represent what on this column and just take the wire that you need to clip the uh, plastic piece off of and let's say it's this one right here and do what you need to and then connect it to the button that you want to connect it to. Then plug in with a mini USB um, to USB connector this and then run it straight to your system whether it be a PS3 or a PC. So we ended up finding a smaller tool around the house and this one again has those sharp pincher ends so hopefully this might even work better. Just roll it on out. Yeah, looks like it does work a little better because it's got more accuracy. Okay, looking good. Another method that you could use to get these fit onto those would be to make these more, uh, just less wide, I guess you could say. I don't have good tin, tin snips, but if I did, you know, I would just basically um, find a way to get that divided, okay, by pressing in and clipping it and then removing part of it. And then these would fit on there. So that might be another method you could try. All right, so I've gotten to this black ground wire that's going into this left side, far left. And the ground wire leads to a chain, a daisy chain of plastic connectors. So these are all gonna have to be gotten into and spread apart like that one is. So we'll go ahead and do this. This is the ground. There we go. Next. Step. Here's. Easy enough. Okay, so I actually have this kind of organized at this point. And you've got the joystick here, the trackball, and the spinner. And coming out of the trackball, there's a white and a blue wire. This represents the fire button of the joystick and the white is going actually feeds into this little black wire and that's a ground okay and if you take a look in the booklet that came with the joystick there's actually a diagram that shows what this board's all about actually the board is upside down at the moment so if we flipped it this way this is more like representing that board so that you can see GND and GND so both this black wire and this black wire are ground wires. And on the other, other side, the, uh, there's GND and GND as well. So these are all connected to each other. So any of these ground wires, by the way, here's an example of one of the ground wires. You're gonna connect one ground to, let's say, this button and the next one gets connected, linked to that button, and then the third one gets to that button and maybe the fourth one would go to this and then the fifth one would go to that. So, you know, they're all linking together. That's what ground is all about. We've got plenty of linking wires. Now, now we have non-linking wires, like these for the most part are non-linking. They just direct connect. And so I will be then 
taking, uh, let's say, the one that represents the X button, which actually is on this side, and it goes, I'm not sure which one is the X button. I think it's this white, I believe it's the white wire here. And again, you just look at your diagram to figure out which color is representing what. But anyway, that would go to whatever you choose to make your X button. And then you do, this is the PlayStation 3 um, labeling, a square button, triangle button, and a circle button. And then on the other side, you'll do L1, L2, R1, R2. And hopefully that makes sense. Now, um, if you make the Tron joystick, which is right here, um, button on the tr it's a trigger button let's say you make that square well then you would open up a button here to do something else what would you make that well you've got all your bases covered they actually have um, on this board available a uh, button that does or an activity that does mode switching I kind of like the idea of using one of these buttons uh, for mode actually it will be one of these buttons I think so I have to decide which button I want to make the mode button but I may just make the joystick fire button the square button which uh, it says here is button one of a PC and so that would probably be a good plan all right so anyway the diagram will be helpful to you and hopefully once I get this all connected uh, you'll see how it looks together now, another thing, um, I've got this separate encoder board. This is known as the 12-in-1 board. And the 12-in-1, it was pretty easy to hook up. All you gotta do is get the 12-in-1 hooked up to this spinner via this little connector into here. And then from the trackball, it gets connected here. And then all you gotta do is plug in your micro USB right there. And on the other side, you got a full, full on um, USB connector. Now you have a choice. You're going to have a USB similar connector coming out of this so you can have two wires coming out of the arcade stick or you can just stick a uh, USB hub in here and connect them to the USB hub and have one wire coming out. And I think that's what I'm going to initially try but you have a choice. You know you can have them the joystick separate from the uh, trackball and spinner um, I'm, yeah, it's trackball and spinner, or you can connect them all together with a USB hub and then have them all going out on one wire, which your PC would then sort out. I'm not so sure how that'll work on PS3, but I know that'll work on PC. In fact, it might be what's necessary to get the game Tron working to get them all connected via a USB hub is very desirable for that purpose because they work together in that game. One more thing. Every time you see a red wire, this is coming out of the joystick. This is for lighting up the joystick. And it goes to VCC, which is right here on this encoder board. And if you had lighted up buttons, you would use this linkage to um, you know, use as basically your connector for each going around to each one. But we're not lighting up buttons. I don't have those kind of buttons, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, this will just not be, be used. All right, so I'm gonna to try to get this all set up and connected properly. And once it's all done and I'll have the USB hub in here, I'll, I'll get the bottom put on it and we'll show you how it works. Oh, and one more thing, I just wanna mention this. I mentioned the blue wire and the white wire being together with white going to ground. Well, the blue wire is going into the encoder board right here, okay? And that is actually the PlayStation Home button. That means my trigger on my Tron joystick, every time I click it, is gonna represent the PS Home button. I don't know if I really want it to be the Home button, so what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm going to take the blue wire and snip it, I don't know, maybe right around here, and I'm going to reconnect to, let's say, maybe this, I don't know if I'm gonna make it the X button or if I'm gonna make it the circle button but one of these represents circle and I could just snip that and connect it to this blue wire and then I would then take the blue wire that's left over and connect it up to my what's what I want to be my PlayStation home button which is right here in the middle at the it'll be at the top of the joystick 
So hopefully that makes sense. I will mention something about this in the description, um, maybe going a little further into how I connected those wires together and did the switcheroo. Thanks. All right, so we got all the wires hooked up. I want to show you a couple things. I attached the joystick encoder board here. You can see I've tacked it down with some a uh, couple of screws. Those were 3 8 inch, definitely less than a half inch. And over here, I have tacked down the 12 and one board, again, using very short screws that were less than a half inch. I've got a Sabrent USB hub with port one and port two. Uh, port, uh, you know, just basically the joysticks in one and the trackball and spinner connected to the 12 and one are connected to port two. Um, this particular USB hub has a very short cord, this one. And I've just attached that to an extender. This is the end of the extender. It's coming out here. I'm eventually gonna put a hole right here so that it'll pop through that hole and it should be just fine there. But for now, I've got it just coming out the side in between the wood and the plastic. I think that'll be okay for now. All right, so yeah, like I said, it's all hooked up. So we're gonna put the bottom on and we will see how it's working. Okay, we got our arcade stick all hooked up to this laptop and I got the laptop um, sending a signal out to my TV so we can get a nice big picture. And we got everything lit up. We got the blue trackball. This comes in a variety of colors, green and red, etc. Uh, I picked blue so it'll match the Tron stick. Um, mouse is working and if you go over here to Centipede and start the game. So I'm going to go over here and pick one player game. Now when the game itself is running, I've got it set so the buttons will work. And in fact, the joystick works as well. In fact, this works, but it's set a little slow for that. My computer could be set to run it faster, but I don't want to play it with a spinner. Oh boy, I'm going to pickle. Ah, all right. I do want to show you some millipede. Let's switch over to that. So the Atari Anniversary Edition comes in Volume 1 and Volume 2. So I'm switching over to Volume 2. All right, so there's Millipede. We'll go ahead and get that fired up. And go down to uh, play single player. I've got this set on enhanced graphics. You'll see it's kind of got some cartoony looking graphics, but it plays identically to the original. Close. It's just as smooth as silk. This nice trackball is working great. Get, see if I can get him. All right. Another game I'd like to show you. Let me um, switch it over. Is Battle Zone. All right. Give that a shot. Yeah, that was close. Okay, another game, Tempest. There we go, Tempest. 
and I'm going to use the um, spin or the um, trackball for this one. Put that over on player one. Works very well. Okay, I'm going to use the spinner now. You can do this if you want to. Right hander. Okay, let's there we go. Take care of that. What a nice spinner. It's just as smooth as silk. Very nice. I have another game. All right, so this game is Typhoon 2001. It's modeled after Tempest 2000, which is an Atari Jaguar game. And you'll see that this is a really high res version of Tempest. So you can see what's going on really deep in the background. On the Jaguar, you know, playing on a CRT screen, like a television set, it can get a little hairy because of the lack of resolution. But with an LCD and a game running on equipment that's designed to do a little better, it, it's just a little extra awesome. But it's also a little harder of a game to play than the original. I've learned that on the Jaguar version, I can get you know over 200,000 points on my first playthrough and just keep stacking up lives during the beginning part of the game. This game though, it's, it's definitely a little more of a challenge. But it's still a lot of fun. And it has the bonus levels just like the Jaguar game did. But again, they're hard to get to. <laughs> All right. And this also has Super Zapper, which is nice. Ah. All right. Another neat thing about this game, it's got the mouse speed cranked up there. You can also go into your laptop settings and set the mouse speed to be pretty high as well. So, kind of nice. So on a future episode, I'll probably be going into playing some PlayStation 3 games. That includes PS1 games in a PS3, which is uh, just amazing. And, you know, that you can use this joystick with a PS3. Also, um, the trackball works on the menus of the PS3 as a mouse would. But once you get into the games, not so much. Now there are ways to get a, one of these uh, PC-based mice working in PS3 games. It requires special adapters to accomplish that. Now another thing, um, you can use this on a PlayStation 4. Again, it's the same story. You can use the joystick and I've got an adapter that converts it from a PC controller into a PS4 controller. Or you could say PS3 to PS4 controller adapter. So that's kind of going to be interesting to, uh, to explore as well. Next episode, we're going to be going over some Atari 5200 information about a new controller adapter that lets you use Genesis controllers as well as Atari 2600 or Atari computer controllers on that 5200. So I'm looking forward to explaining that, showing it off, and one of our follow-up episodes after that, are, it's going to have to do with using this on the PlayStation 3 and maybe PS4. So um, look forward to uh, hearing from you down in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed to my channel as of yet and you really enjoy classic gaming, I think you've come to the right channel. So definitely give us a subscribe, give us a like, and uh, look forward to talking with you in the comments below. It's been great sharing this with you, how to do this. And if you want to make your own computer uh, joystick for either computers, PS3 or PS4, um, I invite you to comment below about your progress. So thank you very much for watching the program. I will talk to you guys in the near future. Take care.